these games are so weirdly educational. Like, not even really what I do. I mean, I, I'm just an idiot that watches the map change colors. You can only make your commentary and analysis compelling if you have very broad knowledge in six or seven core subjects. I can learn the new thing, but as soon as I do, the old thing is gone. And it's just this like hamster wheel of learning and forgetting. Have you ever considered the fact that each time you drop out, it makes you exponentially more powerful? Yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> How many people, Drew, do you think have film degrees that wish they were Steven Spielberg? You painted this Stalin portrait, I, oh, I'm going to be generous here, with your hair. What did you do with that painting? Hey, welcome to the Create Unknown, the home of Make Something, Mean Something. I am Kevin Lieber, and we are live on Discord because it's TCU night. What is TCU night? Wednesday night. Have you heard of Wednesday? There's one every single week. And on that <laughs> day, you can say T-G-I-W. Thank God it's Wednesday. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> I almost messed it up, too. I had to think of the letters uh, like mid Mid sentence, um, we're live on Discord. It's it 6 is Thursday. PM. It is Thursday for the Australians, though. Early Thursday, Australians like Tom Videoger, who just moments ago joined the infantry. Thank you, Tom. Right, right. It is also upside down there. They have to box a, kanga a kangaroo when they turn eighteen. There's a lot of things that are different yeah. in Australia. It plays our episodes backwards. You know the the thing about <laughs> like water swirling. <laughs> Swirling in the drain, right. like in a different way. It, it plays podcasts backwards there. It does. It does. Yeah, it's like the old, the old Ozzy, Ozzy thing, uh, hailing <laughs> Satan. Um, that's pretty much what this podcast is. So now that we're off to a really good start, uh, Matt, Very good why start. don't you uh, tell us about our guest? Okay. Um, 2,400 years ago, something happened. Uh, the Greeks decided to move beyond stories and myths to convey morality and cultural information. They decided to start recording the truth, for better and worse. And history as we know it then was born. Thucydides, the greatest of those Greek historians, could never have predicted that Drew Dernil would eventually ply their craft in a digital laboratory of simulated battles royale in which AI-guided global civilizations make strategic on-screen moves analyzed for the on-demand entertainment of literally tens of millions of people worldwide. He just cracked the 350 million view barrier on YouTube the other day, and he's got another 30-some thousand followers on Twitch. Drew's elevated analytical gaming commentary is actually shockingly difficult to pull off. It requires a deep knowledge of world history, geography, economics, cultures, and the humanities in a very unique amalgamation that somehow doesn't ruin or diminish any of its components. Negative three people listening will know this reference, but Drew channels the holistic historian Fernand Brodel better than anyone on YouTube. This is the only opportunity I will ever have to reference Grudel on this podcast, so I just took it. Drew uses simulations in games like Civilization VI to answer questions such as, what if the United States colonized Africa? What would a purely communist world look like? What happens when every nation has 100 nuclear weapons? And probably my favorite video of his, who wins when 44 nations battle for Earth until only one is left? Spoiler alert, it was not the good guys. All of this works because, despite having probably the broadest knowledge of anyone we've interviewed, Drew doesn't take himself too seriously, which is why there's a video in which he paints a picture of Joseph Stalin in the style of Bob Ross, using his famous haircut as the paintbrush. Drew, I've just right now read on Twitter that World War III has broken out, involving all 197 UN-recognized countries in a fight for standalone supremacy. Who wins? Ooh, 
That's a tough one. Um, <laughs> I guess it really depends. I mean, are we allowing anyone to turn to any different ideology? I mean, that's the one thing that I've noticed. I think anything on, goes. Anything goes. I mean, because anything goes. This is World it War seems, III. It seems like the democracies don't fare too well usually when I, whenever I have something going like this. Uh, so I guess it wouldn't be a whole lot of. Uh, I don't think it, it would remain a whole lot of Western countries. I would probably, you know okay. what? I have my money on probably North Korea. I think they've been prepared for this, and when it finally breaks out, they probably got a plan. And how long does this war last? I don't think it lasts long. I think it probably lasts about three to four days, and then probably everyone's. There's no one left, so I don't know who's going to log this stuff anymore. <laughs> Unless they want to send me to space, I've always like joked about like uh, maybe just doing commentary whenever there is a, a, a war going on. People have joked about that, and uh, it's I, I, I would do it if they need me to, like a sports commentary, esports from the from like one of the satellites. <laughs> So you would be up in space looking down on this real life risk board, uh, doing the the blow by blow. Yeah, I mean, I think so. And then with my like stupid jokes, as long as the Earth is okay with all the dumb things that I, I say with it, I mean, that's kind of necessary though. I can't do it if I don't get to say stupid dad jokes. And who's the runner up, by the way? So if North Korea is the last man standing, who is second to last? Second to last, probably Switzerland, because I can't see them getting involved. I, I feel like they've already gone long enough without being involved in so many other conflicts that uh, they'll probably just chill behind their mountains making chocolate. And then they get they get tweaked by North Korea, even though they've they've played nice the whole time. I think uh, I think so. I mean, they might get lucky enough to just be like used as um, prisoners of war. I think that could that could be possible. I think Kim wow. Jong Un could maybe maybe use some prisoners of war at some point in his post in, is, in his post apocalypse world. Is there? This is the the last uh, question I've got on this this simulation. I'm just too curious about how it could play out. Who's the sleeper? Who you know? We know it's not uh, number one or number two, but who's the sleeper who performs in this world war way better than you'd expect? Uh, I I, must, I I didn't know that we were doing like real real questions uh if if we're talking about legitimately <laughs> if i'm not joking this around is real life this is real this life, is real life. Yep. oh man real life oh that's probably china china probably probably has got it i mean i think um uh, u.s i don't i don't think it would uh i think the world would probably all die before uh there is a chosen winner fairly certain that we'd all be dead before there's a clear-cut winner that planet of the apes scenario probably Probably all the uh, it'd be like the dream result for like uh, anarcho primitivism. Do you know what that is? Return to monkey. Isn't that? Yeah. Isn't that kind of like basically rust? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Kind of like that. <laughs> like for the believers in that, like that would be like a dream come true because we'd probably just go back to the hunting gathering days. And you know what? I think I'm OK with that. Sometimes it sounds like fun. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I've watched enough uh rust gameplay to to think that's not how you'd really want to live seems a little seems a little crass and difficult yeah i'm sure there'd be a lot of horrible things that that happen to you <laughs> <laughs> it seems like the opposite of fun it seems like a lot of work just to yeah. not die every day yeah that sucks i don't know how our ancestors did it what is the uh what's the youtube channel where the guy you know he's like today i'm going to like bake uh, a a shovel. I'm gonna make a shovel. And uh, what is oh. it? Is that the Townsend's channel? Well, he does food, but like Townsend's does like 1700s kind of living. No, or is this more primitive than it's that? More primitive. Yeah, you want primitive te technology? Primitive is that what technology? it's called? It's just literally called primitive technology. Yeah, I think that's I thought, it. Yeah, and he just like goes and makes things. Like that is like the most incredible channel. Like that guy's a genius. No audio, no music. It's just the sounds of nature while he's just like building shit. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could do that. Like, I wish I was like masculine enough to be able to get on that level. <laughs> what? What's stopping you? A beard. First of all, I don't have any facial hair. Like, I feel like you, you can't go out into the forest without a beard. <laughs> I mean, it's just you, you got to look. The, the most important part is to make sure you look cool. 
<laughs> it, it depends on the geography, though. I mean, like, it, you kind of you kind of have to have a beard in the cold climates, right? It's True. a bit of a necessity. Uh, it but also help but, in the sun, you know, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, I mean, it gets you know, beards can get kind of grimy when sweat's involved, though. True. The problem why I need a beard is because, like, I am like pasty white, and two like ten minutes in the sun, <laughs> and it's over for me. Like, I'm it's I'm done. So I need something at least a little bit of extra to cover up. How are you going to survive when you're living rust then? Because you're going to have to, you're going to be exposed all the time in that scenario. I'm hoping that I will be sent up to space and I will be in the satellite just announcing, uh, that way I can just starve up there instead of having to do the brutal world down below. I wouldn't have to worry too much. (laughs) I was going to say, what do you have? What do you have on your satellite gamer fuel and combos and (laughs) beef jerky, slim Jims? (laughs) That's all I need right there. It's going to, yeah, I think that will be good. I got to talk to Elon about that though. Yeah. The freeze dried ice cream, you know, that's right. (laughs) It's like, uh, with a texture of packing peanuts and tang, (laughs) lots of tang. (laughs) Um, can I, can we back up a second with your, your North Korea joke? Because that actually made me wonder when you're doing these simulations where countries are, you know, fighting each other for global domination, are nukes allowed? Like how do the nukes come into play? Cause it seems like. Yeah, if you're North Korea and you just create, uh, you just end life as we know it with your nukes, you could win pretty quickly. But, you know, what kind of planet are you now living on? What did you just conquer? Well, a lot of the times, um, most of those simulations are done in the past. A lot of them go back to certain points in history that, you know, where they don't have nukes. Um, when it is like a modern day sort of scenario, then yeah, they are dropping nukes kind of left and right. But Keep in mind, there's only a few countries that have nukes. Do you guys know which ones they are? Ooh, pop oh, quiz. Um, the, so the United States, Russia, India, yes, Pakistan, Russia, India, Pakistan, France, Egypt. Yeah, France, uh, UK, mm-hmm. Egypt, and Israel. Israel uh, and think, maybe North Korea, right? We don't know. I don't know about Egypt for sure, but yeah, North Korea supposedly, and then I think you missed China. China. Sure, but I think they had, Egypt has yeah. nukes. You, they you've got to be kidding me. They have. Oh, I'm, I'm convinced of this. I don't I'm know. I'm convinced that they do. We need some researchers. They, that's Did what you, the pyramids are for. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Did you ever hear the Tom Lehrer song about the bomb? Mm, uh, I don't know. What's the that. actual title of this? Oh, it's called "Who's Next." Mm. Uh, oh, oh, and yeah. it's a song about nuclear war. But this, this probably came out in maybe the mid. 1960s and it's meant to be funny uh but uh yeah he he projects that egypt's going to get one too just to use on you know who mm. uh in a, in a very cryptic threat to israel uh but yeah i mean i don't know i don't know i don't know if uh we're allowed to know everybody who ha- has these at this point well the chat yes. says Who's that next? egypt's launched a nuclear program in 1954 so that's probably where Lair yeah. got that uh, but supposedly yeah they uh they don't have one but again who knows I, I think that's what the pyramids are for I'll tell you what for all the egyptians listening is so i get a report from chartable that tells by country who listens to this podcast. I've never seen us pop on an Egyptian chart, so I, I don't feel bad about what I'm about to say. I don't trust you. I think you've got a nuke and you're not telling us. <laughs> Either that or they're hiding the aliens. I mean, oh. they're hiding the aliens that build the pyramids. That's right. I don't right. know how much we want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> you know, uh, pyramid fact, uh, we are closer in the timeline to Cleopatra. Mm-hmm. than Cleopatra was to the pyramids, the building of the pyramids. How wild is that? Yep. Yep. That is crazy. It's an old building. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. So this kind of, uh, this kind of speculation, uh, how, what's that like? Like, have you, have you ever been, have you ever sp- speculated on something and then kind of regretted it and thought like, oh, that was, that was a really dumb theory. Yeah, like pretty much my whole life, almost. <laughs> or, or I guess um, the channel too. I even my channel itself was is a good idea of like a theory that I didn't think was really going to work out. I'm like, there's there's no way I can just watch watch games play out and this work. And uh, and yeah, I was wrong. Well, how good is 
the AI in these games? Well, first, can you, you know, I mentioned Civilization VI in the intro. What are, what's the list of games that, that uh, uh, you use for content? Well, it's, the list has expanded so much now. It's, uh, but I started with a game called Civilization V, and then it went to Civilization VI, and then it went to uh, Paradox, which they create games like Hearts of Iron 4, Europa Universalis 4. Um, so more, these are more like focused on a world map. Um, then it eventually expanded to like uh, political games where uh, I actually ac- actually predicted uh, that Joe Biden was going to win the presidency. This was all the way back in March 2020. Nobody gives me enough credit for that. Uh, you, I basically just had them play out just AI only. And uh, and you'd be shocked at how many times I've like predicted the future. Just as a complete joke, I'm like, hey, let's figure out who's going to do this or who's going to do this. I think I figured out who won the World Cup in like 2018. Um, obviously, it's stupid. But I'm just saying that if I'm a betting man, I'd probably watch my channel and try to figure figure out. There's there's hints that the AI has given us that we don't even know yet. You know, it's it's completely possible to predict those things. There's a, an economist named... Daniel Johnson, he's a Canadian guy. Uh, I only know him because he he taught my microeconomics course, but he's famous for predicting Olympic medals by country to a sh- like a shockingly high degree of accuracy. Um, I just looked him up to get the exact number. Uh, his model has demonstrated 94% accuracy for predicting national medal counts and 87% accuracy for gold medal counts. So he's using... All of these societal factors, all the data he has coming with kind of an economics mind onto it, and then predicting sporting events. <laughs> Why even bother? It's... Just just to ask him who wins. <laughs> and then only, he can hand out the medals. <laughs> Here you go, China. Here's your 197 <laughs> bronze medals. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, he's doing kind of the same thing, though, that, that Drew, you're doing, where... He's got to be simulating a ton of different scenarios, getting a sense of the results, and then applying it to to something real. I mean, do you when you run on all these different games, uh, and I'm sure some are better than others, and some ratchet up the entertainment factor more than the reality factor. Uh, but do you feel like like you're getting a, a real understanding of of how things work with this stuff? Oh yeah, like that's. Uh... It's funny to say, and it's weird to say, but there's totally a factor of like, you are learning. Like these games are so weirdly educational. Um, Like not even really what I do. I mean, I'm just an idiot that watches the map change colors. Uh, But the actual games (laughs) themselves are uh, are, like, they they just like subtly put these little seeds in your head. They just plant these little seeds in your head, like helping you understand um, actually what happened in the past or... Uh, whatever, along the same lines, how things work in general. What's an example of that? Hmm. Well, I mean, like, I guess it starts off with uh, ga- countries that colonized, like, you know, big colonial powers, you know, or why, for instance, uh, Brazil speaks Portuguese. Like, I don't know. I didn't know <laughs> why Brazil speak Portuguese. Like, you know, I guess it's like, uh, it's funny. I know this guy that is... Uh, Portuguese he's he's like an MMA fighter and uh everyone his name is Jose but he's from Portugal so everyone says Jose but he's actually Jose it, that's I guess how you're supposed to pronounce his name and uh it's something that I had try to explain to other people that like it's it, it's different because in Brazil you know and that's just like just very one of many ways I didn't even realize that Brazil was a you know Portuguese colony like 10 years ago I mean this this is just one of the many things I guess that I've learned because I went into this whole thing not knowing anything like I, I again like I'm an idiot I still am you know I, there are some things that I understand maybe better than before but uh it, it's just uh it's kind of it's kind of weird <laughs> in which which uh, well I, I want to go way back many 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 years back um what was the first game that that you played where you you really got into thinking about these things through the lens of the game um it was i think it was like there was this old game it's not that old but it's uh, called civilization revolution and you used to be able to get this on your phone it was on uh it was out in like 2009 or something 
And uh, I got that through my phone and then the Xbox. And then I eventually evolved into Civilization V. I started playing that a lot because I was a weirdo. And uh, I'm pretty sure that game is the reason why I dropped out of college the first time. Because uh, I was just totally addicted. I was just, I didn't have anything else going for me. I was just playing this one game. And uh, and eventually, when I started creating my channel, I just started with that game, Civilization V. I, I didn't start doing simulations until there was this old uh, article talking about how someone had done basically this, like an AI only sort of big battle. I, I don't remember. It must have been in like 2014. And I was like, well, I would like to see that. Let me just let me just do that myself. And this was just unedited. I would just run the game and uh, and let it play out. And I had no idea what was going on. I just tried my best to be entertaining. And uh, eventually that kept kind of evolving into like, how many games can I do this sort of thing in? Um, I think recently I tried it in chess. That was weird. I just tried to like re recreate different historical moments in history in chess. So like I recreated the French Revolution what? by putting a bunch of pawns down. Yeah, because uh, you can do like chest modifications. <laughs> I found this like like yeah okay. website where you could do like random chess games. So I put like 30 pawns down and then one king and one queen. And I just wanted to see what would happen. And uh, that video actually did pretty well, weirdly enough. <laughs> well, chess is is huge at the moment and i know yeah. i've read articles about saying it was it's tied to uh the queen's gambit series on netflix oh, i don't know yeah. how true that is um you know that that kind of thing happens all the time where some uh you know some movie or tv show spurs an interest in in something for a little bit uh but but yeah a lot of people are uh starting to think through things via chess and that's that's really interesting that you could uh that you could set these games like that. Did both sides have the same pieces or did you do a conflict where like it was a, a, a chess army corresponding to, you know, to the, the talents and resources of, of that side? No, no, I, I, I tried to, I mean, it wasn't very scientific at all. I just kind of threw things on the board and see, you know, saw what happened, but I just tried my best to be like, okay, let's try to create the uh, Mongol empire. So I just threw a bunch of, um, dang, I'm going to sound dumb right now. It, uh, is it the knight? Yeah, the knight's down. I threw a bunch of the knights down and, uh, just, just basically, you know, five rows full of knights. And I kept the other side, the exact same, the exact same <laughs> setup just to see if, uh, if that was doable. Um, obviously th they would end up pretty one-sided, but it was still interesting. Like sometimes, sometimes my creations just sucked. Like they weren't good at all. I think, uh, like I tried to recreate Troy once. Uh, I got, yeah, it was just, uh, it, it's just bad. <laughs> sometimes the night the night changes everything in uh like the mathematical analysis of chess we uh, uh we got this book uh you know we, we constantly read about math games and things like that this is what the vsauce 2 does and just the other night i was reading about uh solving checkers and the myth that uh that it was uh, a solved game back in the 60s it actually wasn't uh, it was a lot more recent that chess was math or uh, checkers was mathematically solved, and the e people stopped being interested in in checkers in the mathematical sense because it's is fairly simple. Um, but when they started to give the pieces different rules as if it were chess, they said that the movement of the knight applying that to to checkers absolutely changes everything. It just like throws the simplicity out the window and makes it far far more complex so i imagine if you have five rows of these hyper powerful pieces extremely flexible pieces uh yeah it would be impossible to beat oh yeah it wasn't very well balanced at all but i still wanted to give it a try <laughs> see what would happen let's go back to dropped out of college the first time <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what what happened there? I mean, you said you were playing too much, too many video games, and, and so then you went back, and then you dropped out again. Like walk yeah, us yeah. walk us through this process. Yeah, I, I've got the uh, I've got the unique uh, position of dropping out of college twice, so that was kind of fun. I, I dropped out the first time because I was just a I, I don't know I just wasn't really into it, um, and then I went back a year later. I uh, went to a community college a year later. I, I went to a university at first dropped out, went to a community college, had a fun time there, went to another university after that, and then I dropped out from there. Um, but and it's kind of funny because 
Yeah, like my channel is so, uh, it's going to be weird to say this because I really don't think so, but so many people consider my channel to be educational and uh, it's uh, it's just so weird because I don't, I, I can't see myself like that at all. Actually, the it YouTube is. algorithm looks at me as an educational channel because they'll put this little like word. They'll, if you search uh, certain things, when you, when you go into like a search page, um, they'll have like a little tab that says, uh, learn while you're at home. And then it's just like my big dumb face right there in the thumbnail. And I, I just I just cannot believe that that is uh, that is what the algorithm considers me to be. I don't think you give yourself enough credit on this because it's like what I said in the intro. You can only make your commentary and analysis compelling if you have very broad knowledge in six or seven core subjects like like you truly have to. um you really have to know like the classical kind of breakdown of the, uh, you know, trivium and quadrivium to pull this off. Um, it's, it kind of surprises me that you wouldn't see what you do as being educational when, uh, it, it's just like machine gunning knowledge in almost every video between the funny stuff, between the, yeah. the hilarious stuff. It's all, it's all red meat. It's, it's hard educational stuff. It is, uh, it just scares me a little bit. It just scares me that uh, that I'm out here, you know, teaching um, kids. I, I, th- I think I think that's a kind of terrifying. But um, I don't know. Maybe I'll I'll get more comfortable with it in the future. I, I just try my best, honestly, to keep things entertaining. I just try my best to I don't know. Uh, hopefully, keep people's attention to you know to be able to keep up with some of these very complicated issues. Um, and and you know what? I think memes help a ton like uh just reviewing memes there's there's so many like i i really didn't think my my channel would be younger than like 18 years old and for a long time like the demographics was like 18 to 24 that was like the strongest point and as i've okay. gotten through time as i've gone through it's like it's like dramatically shifted down where like i i've had like really i've had like eight-year-olds say like like t- tell me that i've taught them so much about history and that 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 is really scary because you know i i don't think an eight-year-old should be watching me but it's i guess it's good that they're getting something you know out of my content it is weird i actually had a a girl recently um comment randomly on my facebook page i don't even like go on facebook i don't know how she found me on facebook she was some girl from the philippines and she told me that her teacher would put on my videos every friday and i was just I, I just, I That's didn't even, I, yeah, no, I, I know. I was just like, do you guys know what I say? Like, how is this, you know, <laughs> like allowed, like, <laughs> how is this okay? Um, it's kind of funny, but, um, yeah, I try not to think too much about that. Cause I, then I, then I get nervous. <laughs> well, you said that, that you, uh, well, there were, there were multiple dropouts here. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm thinking of like, what kind of what kind of student were you? Uh, Cause I'm thinking about how you functioned in this environment, uh, and then kind of didn't function and went to do it on your own. Like what, what pushed you out? Hmm. Yeah. I've never really been like a school person. I always mm-hmm. was, uh, I was just always the class clown basically. Um, and I just kind of coasted through high school and then I got to college and, um, I, uh, I had fun in college. Like I, I went to school to do like uh, television and communications like that area. And okay. um, I had fun in there, but eventually it just, it just got to the point where I, I would just, I was just so driven in my own projects. Like if I, I had this channel while I was going through college and uh, I couldn't stop just doing my own thing. Like I couldn't stop, you know, focusing on, on like my own project. I, I don't know um, why that was, but I, I struggled through like being forced to learn about whatever it is, math, you know, <laughs> which actually would have come really in handy as a YouTuber. You know, math can come very important, but um, yeah, I don't know how I would be now. I feel like maybe if I were to try it again, I'd be better now, but uh, yeah. I mean, there's Is it something you've thought about? Oh, sorry, Kevin. Just, but uh, yeah, is, it, is there a chance of like a third round? <laughs> <laughs> round three, round three. Um, maybe. I mean, I I love what I do so much that it would just it would have to be. I don't know. I I feel like I wouldn't be able to do what I do now. Like I focus pretty much every 
thing every waking moment on uh on you know youtube or twitch or whatever it might be not so much twitch anymore but you know like anything sort of related to this stuff and uh maybe later in life maybe when i'm like you know old and i you know maybe have some sort of knowledge actually to to work off of that'd be kind of fun it would be fun to go and actually learn about history from an educational standpoint because i've basically just learned through the memes like i've just been <laughs> just memed my way through the the knowledge basically i was just gonna say there's that classic list of highly successful people bill gates mark zuckerberg steve jobs on the list i don't know you know who are famous college dropouts so you know, if you have just because you don't perform well in the very specific structure that we have defined in the West for schooling, A, doesn't mean you're an idiot. And B, doesn't mean that you aren't interested in learning and can't learn. It, it is totally possible that you just learn better the way that you're doing now. And I don't see why there's anything wrong with that. And I don't see why that makes you an idiot. It means maybe you are bad at school. And I think that that's okay. There are people who are bad at taking tests. Um, that doesn't mean they're they're dumb, you know? Like, I have a really hard time. Um, I, I can remember things really well for very short periods of time, and then it's gone. So, uh, for instance, you know, Matt and I, grew up in New York and New York had these state exams at the end of the year called the regents exams. And they were like the end all be all kind of standardized state tests that you had to uh, take. And essentially it was everything you learned throughout the year kind of condensed into one standardized test in June or whatever. I love them. So I, I can't wait to hear what you're about to say. Well, here's one of the many differences between Matt and I. I hated them <laughs> and I did really poorly. I could ace, okay, every test along the way throughout the year because I learned the thing. I would remember it. I'd regurgitate it on the test and I'd ace it. By the end of the year, I had forgotten all of that and I would do really bad. I would get like straight C's on those Regents exams. Because I couldn't remember any of it. It was like there was an episode of uh, Married with Children where uh, Kelly Bundy goes on Jeopardy. And <laughs> in order to re to learn a new thing, she has to forget an old thing. And, and I just felt like that's me. I'm Kelly Bundy. Like I can learn the new thing. But as soon as I do, the old thing is gone. And it's just this like hamster wheel of learning and forgetting. That's why I like making videos because then I can watch old videos and be like, oh, I used to know that. <laughs> <laughs> so on these, on these regents exams, I absolutely crushed. I was a baller on the regents exams and I'm comfortable saying this because on them. I think about, <laughs> yeah, I am. I just, am yeah, yeah, I, just because flexing. I think about guys like Michael Reeves who have told exactly the same story that Drew just did, where it's like you get this wildly talented person who's super curious about all sorts of things. And, it, you know, they, they just don't they don't stand out. But the funny thing about me crushing the regents is who works for who now? You know, like Kevin's like, oh, I got straight C's on these. I, I was, you know, bummed when I would miss like two questions on one test. And uh, who's the superior and who's the inferior professionally now? <laughs> 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 like, it, it just shows that, you know, this uh, this dynamic does not translate necessarily to uh, how things work out in real life. <laughs> Kevin makes me polish his shoes. He <laughs> makes me do his taxes. It's it's humiliating, but but this is yeah. I have to eke out an existence clean somehow. Up, clean my corn uh, corn cob pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, we do hear a lot of stories like that, and occasionally we talk to somebody who, you know, like like Dustin Sandlin, who excels in an academic area. He has you know he's had an outstanding professional career because he knows. Uh, science to an extremely high degree you know it's kind of tough to do that um without traditional study but most of the people we talked to were not valedictorians they just they just weren't you know they they were talented people who uh did not 
did not excel in that system. And then they get into another system that's a lot more freeform, something like YouTube. And all the ballers in there, uh, you know, were, uh, if, if not, um, you know, uh, middle of the road, mediocre in academics, um, you know, they, they weren't breaking any records. So it's amazing to see how people can use their talent in a way, you know, that's, that's outside the system and just have incredible results. You're in classes, classrooms in the Philippines, you know, Kevin and Michael and Jake are in, uh, science and math classes, uh, all over the place, you know, and it's, it's, it's just amazing to see that because 50 years ago, uh, I don't know what you guys do. Probably, uh, probably just bum, bum on the street. I think I would have been a pretty good bum, probably dance pretty well. I, I don't know. You know, you're saying you, you weren't masculine enough to, to survive that's the monkey, true. The the monkey life. Yeah, that's kind of what that is. <laughs> oh, dang. That's a good point. You know what? You might have got me there. I don't know. <laughs> there's a niche for, there's got to be a niche for twink bums. Oh, Maybe. You know? <laughs> I think there is, but it might be illegal. <laughs> it might be. Uh, I don't know if you'll ever see me again. But look, Well, the big question that Kevin and I were talking about before we started this, like, well, we, we kind of want to find out how somebody becomes Drew Durnell. Like, this is, is what we want to understand is how you can bounce around uh, different academics, play around with games and come up with something that is incredibly, incredibly useful, literally worldwide. Um, what, what are we, what are we missing? What are we not seeing? That's it. That's a tough one. I mean, it just came out of uh, my channel is like really weird. Like it's just, it's hard to, there's really nothing I can compare it to at the moment because like, you know how there's like this new feature in the analytics that show uh, like the last seven videos or the last, like out of the last seven days, what your audience has watched most, like besides your own videos, it'll show you other videos that your audience has watched most. And it's the most hilarious okay. thing because you'll have like a 10 second meme video about like a country disappearing. Like they'll be like basically advocating for the disappearance of Bhutan or something like that. And then right underneath that video will be like a 30 minute in-depth documentary about American prohibition or something like that. And uh, <laughs> it's so weird because I just, I don't even know I don't even know what this is. I don't even know what I've stumbled upon. Um, and that's kind of this thing across my, the, the, just the whole channel. I mean, whether it's memes or these games or like these actual like historical documentaries or in-depth review of, of something, you know, geogra geography wise, uh, it's just, it's just a, it's a weird combination of people that I've, I've been able to like fall under my umbrella basically. That's how you you know how you found a thing, though. I mean, Matt and I were just talking earlier today um, about a different project, and, and I was trying to convey the fact that you kind of have to combine things that make no sense in order to create a thing that's fresh, because otherwise you're just doing the same thing that everybody's seen a million times before. Mm -hmm. So you are combining, what, just scrolling through memes and, and Reddit and stuff with with comedy, which again, a lot of people do, but you sprinkle on the educational side um, and all of a sudden it's a new thing. So it makes a lot of sense to me that you kind of are in your own world, but there are going to be copycats sprouting up probably as we speak, <laughs> people doing the same thing and, and nipping at your heels. Yeah. I've always wondered that it's been, um, I, I wonder when that's going to happen. I mean, that is, sounds great to me because at least it'll have something somebody else that i can like look to because at this point i don't know what the hell i'm doing like i don't there is no like blueprint i i really envy some of the people that have like a clear niche like they can like look to okay you know boom i'm gonna look at vsauce what they doing and i'm gonna do kind of replicate that or kind of do little twists and turns or like i'm out here like i don't even know what to do man i'm just gonna do things and keep things you know that, that interest me um and hope it's not too stupid um, like, uh, like, did you see the, uh, like I, I try to, I, I've I tried to expand a bit more than, um, just history or, or geography. And, uh, like the, the video that you guys, I think you guys saw the shit posts video, like that was, uh, mm -hmm. that, that content just makes itself. I mean, that is in actual textbooks, which I find hilarious because, uh, I don't know if they were college textbooks, but college textbooks 
takes so they're so expensive and um they're just like there's just like these insane memes like already just they just write themselves like the, some of these diagrams <laughs> are just like insane it's funny isn't there a, a twitter account that just posts uh diagrams and artwork from textbooks yep yep that's that's it and uh what's what's that called again shit do you remember what it's called something shit posts that look like science diagrams look like shit posts basically yeah yeah, yeah. that's right it is at science shit post i saw one that's, recently uh, where there was like a yeah. really long horse <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yep. like an insanely long horse <laughs> that and i don't know why i don't know why the horse was so long but it was very funny <laughs> I wonder where this oh, stuff's I coming mean, from. Tom beat me to it, <laughs> popping it in the chat. Oh, it's in the chat. Yeah, That's I mean, long it's, horse. Oh, yeah. it was detailing how long their intestines are? Okay. So mm, yeah. anyone's listening on audio, they can't see the diagram in chat. <laughs> the point of the long horse <laughs> is to compare it to a human and compare the length of human intestines to horse intestines. Again, not really sure why we need that, but I guess... It's, how, it's, it's, a fun, it's a fun fact. <laughs> how long how long a, a living thing would have to be to have its intestines be in a perfectly straight line? That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's also funny. <laughs> this tube horse. There's also a human oh, version yeah, of that, it, too. It and creepy. we like end up being like, uh, I don't even remember, 15, 20 feet long when you stretch us out. Yeah, it looks like it's about a quarter of the length of a horse. But yeah, there's a, oh, yeah, a very right. long man I see laying him right down. There. Yep. Yeah. So creepy. He's propped his head up. He looks very relaxed, at least. I think, you know, maybe that's like the beginning. Like maybe that's why I'm able to have success because like these diagrams are already like putting basically shit posts inside of textbooks and uh and getting people like preparing people for just like the dumb things. You know, like, you know, like hey, this is dumb, but haha, it's funny, right? And maybe they're learning at the same time. I don't know if that's like a strategy they're really trying to use. Yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have, we're getting several of these uh, uh, science diagrams that look like shit posts. There's a, a mouse that has an arched back and it just says in pain. <laughs> yeah, this is good content. I can see that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I relate to that. Talking about this would be amazing. <laughs> that mouse in pain. Yeah. But we had, we had, <laughs> was it Scott Kramer who we were speaking to recently? And um, I just brought up the fact that there's so much content now on the internet mm, that you yeah. can really just make other content about that content. You know, Drew, when I was watching your channel earlier today, I, I saw a lot of parallels in a way to what kind of Vsauce used to be before it was an educational network. And, you know, like Michael had IMG and he would just show funny pictures and he turned it into like a little story or loot was a show where we would find strange things you could buy and turn it into a little story. But I, I feel as though your content is the modern day. It's so weird to say modern day, but look, we're talking nearly a decade ago with that Vsauce content. Um, a modern day evolution of that where it's, it's not, it's not turning it into a show. It's more like where you're hanging out with the viewer. So you're on camera. You make really funny quips in between in between your reactions to things. Um, there isn't a question here. This is these are just the thoughts that I have when I was. I like analyzing people's content <laughs> and kind of putting it into context in what I know about where we are in YouTube and where we've come from. And I really do see what you're doing right now. Whether you feel like you're lost and, and and stranded at sea not knowing what you're doing i think in some way what you, that is what you're doing is you're curating the internet because there's too much stuff you're finding interesting things so that i don't have to scroll through these subreddits i don't even go i don't know anything about reddit nothing uh, i i did an ama once and that was the only time i, <laughs> I ever went to reddit so the fact that you can be the Didn't, reddit no. sherpa um, in a YouTube video is valuable. I mean, obviously it's valuable. You have, you know, the views to back it up. Didn't you do a video about your own subreddit, Drew? Um, yes. Yeah. And that was, uh, that was interesting. How'd that go? <laughs> well, there's, there's everything. There's a whole lot of things in there that, um, I mean, there's some things that I couldn't even show. Uh, my, uh, the community of people that, that follow me are, um, they're really fun. I will say that they're really fun. I mean, these are really passionate people about that that love 
like like I said, geography, history, flags, um, memes, whatever they are. And um, obviously, when you put all these people together, it, it's just it's just going to be wild. Um, <laughs> I can't even. Yeah, I can't even begin to talk, express how, how many crazy things I, I've really seen. Who comes together in your community? Because I know you talked about uh, the demographics getting a bit younger than they were when you started. But um, if you had to distill your community into a single profile, like like the kind of profile the FBI would use to, to catch somebody. Like murder? On, yeah, exactly. Cool. Uh, what, is, what is the average uh drew hyper subscriber like probably a murderer you got it right probably some murderer out there in the future <laughs> some future murderer i don't know <laughs> that's a lot of murderers <laughs> yeah at least half a million right there that's that they're definitely coming up through here um i would say they're definitely they're definitely younger they you know it's funny because i think that i've been able i've been really lucky to be able to uh turn a lot more people onto this subject onto these things that I find interesting with the way just some of my own videos. I mean, like, for example, like my little brother is, uh, he used to never watch my videos, but um, as I've evolved and made different content, um, he now loves history. Like he now gets like good grades in in history. So um, huh. I, I think it's just, I, I feel like, I, I hope that it's just anyone that maybe has an interest in history that um doesn't fully realize it yet um maybe they don't realize how how weird and uh even funny it can be sometimes and um i think it's mostly male though that's for sure because uh my demographics skew hugely uh male (laughs) but what is it what's the percent (laughs) well you know what it's actually gotten better um it used to be like two percent it used to be like a solid two percent and i was like yeah went up to three percent one time and i was like oh man Look at me, but um, <laughs> this is three three percent female. Yeah, yeah, three percent female. But um, as of recently, it's gotten as high as thirteen percent. So um, you know, watch it there. It's a big change, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like in terms of percentage increase, that's like six hundred percent. Like that's that's significant. Yeah, and I think it's um, I just mostly think it has to do with just opening up these subjects to uh, a lot more people, to a lot more um, people that can kind of get involved i mean i force my editors to uh to learn about this stuff too and um they're like old they're you know they're old like me i guess so i and they didn't even know they liked history old like you yeah <laughs> well i you know oh, in the context uh, of things su- subtle jab there you know no 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 <laughs> no 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 not i mean like yeah <laughs> but um so yeah just uh i i hope i you know i love i would love to think that you know anyone could uh could like some of this you know to like could like to be a part of this community. I'm sure that's not the case, but yeah, who knows? That's something I noticed with the absolute explosion in in uh kind of kind of hobby history content, right? So this is this started before your time, okay? Um but it, really around 20 years ago with the history channel kind of content uh popping up this is all pre-youtube things started to change in terms of people wanting content like that and now we have crazy stuff like you know did did aliens help the nazis build mega weapons uh, yes the the shows yeah <laughs> obviously <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of that uh, on <laughs> history channel and I, I don't even know um what other channels serve that kind of content at this point because i don't i don't have cable but um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the people who really got into history they were never the people who were like traditional history people you know they weren't like history majors uh in college who now keep watching the content they weren't ones who really liked history class in high school they were just regular people who were like oh this is actually really cool it changed everything it really changed um it changed the kind of content that was in demand and i think youtube and eventually people like you hit it at exactly the right time to mix real entertainment with with actually useful history yeah that's um that's I guess what I, you know, try to do, um, I don't know. I I hope that, uh, people, if they are even more interested that they go out and do their own research, cause I'm only going to be able to go 
so deep. You know, again, you're talking to a double college dropout right here. So uh, hopefully, <laughs> I just hope that I can scratch the surface for some people and then maybe they can get a little bit um, deeper uh, on their own. Have you ever considered the fact that each time you drop out, it makes you exponentially more powerful? Yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> That's why I need to go back for just a day and get out of here again three times. Three-time college dropout sounds good. I could put that in all my bios. It does sound like you're a champion of sorts. Yeah. Like what is, you know, if, what's better? Like, like uh, three-time getting, medalist. Well, what was that? <laughs> oh, if you're like three-time, you know medalist uh, in some event or like that's that's amazing I, like that's that's a feat i feel like i should get the diploma just for that just for that title alone the three-time dro- college dropout they should make a yeah a diploma it, for that the funny thing is that if you guys keep going and i i'm talking generally i'm talking to drew i'm talking to kevin and uh, michael and jake and a lot of other people we know if if all of you keep going you're going to start to get honorary degrees. So you joke about getting degrees for this kind of thing. You are absolutely going to get them. Institutions at a certain point are going to start uh, recognizing uh, recognizing academic YouTubers uh, with real contributions to education. Um, this is my prediction. This is my, my uh, uh, probably 2030. I think it's about 10 years, 9, 10 years off. The degrees are going to start to roll in. I hope so. Do, I mean, that saved me a lot of money. Now, though, <laughs> with to like celebrities, like what do, do they just do that for the publicity? Yeah. They're like, oh, here's an honorary diploma, uh, Stephen Tyler from Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's the first person that popped in my head. But do they just do that for the publicity? The, oh, Stephen Tyler got an honorary doctorate from you know Yale. And probably just to say like, hey, Steven Tyler got their doctorate from here. So come here, even though they didn't even, you know, go there. Right. That's ex- it's like yeah. marketing. That's what they did with uh, Steven Spielberg. He like dropped out, right? The director. And uh, he came back oh, like yes. 20 years later to my, uh, to the college I went to, which is Cal State Long Beach. And uh, I mean, they basically just gave it to gave it to him. And then they the film department used that as like their marketing, you know, thing. Hey, Steven Spielberg went here. I mean, you know, when he's 50, but whatever. Drew. Okay. Now he went back into a program in the '90s, and Steven Spielberg uh, submitted Schindler's List as his final project. Oh, oh, yeah, I heard about or, that story. It, yes, yeah, that, that's that's probably the ultimate media flex. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think I don't think you can do a whole lot better <laughs> than that. Uh, but real quick, Steven Tyler did receive an honorary doctorate from UMass Boston because Aerosmith <laughs> is. <laughs> Famously a Boston-based band, uh, Kevin, uh, if you remember Alston, yes. Alston is a neighborhood between Boston University and Boston College, and around 1250 Commonwealth Avenue, that was the, uh, the Aerosmith apartment that they lived in. And so, yeah, Boston plays up the Aerosmith connection hard, and I guess UMass Boston took the plunge. There you go. Um, I was just going to ask, okay, so Steven Spielberg dropped out of college. Uh, how many people... Drew, do you think have film degrees that wish they were Steven Spielberg? I just want to, I'm sorry to to hammer on this, but you know, you keep downplaying your success um, in regards to this dropout thing. I think, I think you should get over that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're doing great. You're doing great. And look at how hard you're working. You're making videos every single day that people are learning from. I mean, it's not like, you're some lazy creator who does nothing, you know, and then at the last minute crams, you know, for the exam metaphorically <laughs> and to, 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 to get a video out to, to collect that sweet ad sense. I mean, you're cranking out content every single day. There's just a lot of, uh, how'd you, a lot of shit posts I got to get through, man. A lot of get shit posts. I got to get that <laughs> shit post degree. That's the one you talked about that degree in 2030. Maybe they'll give shit post doctor. That's doctors. it. Yeah. <laughs> How did you, how did you, um, oh, I completely lost my question. Oh yeah. How did you get to the pace that you're going at now? Because you are cranking content and and you didn't always go at, at this, uh, every other day kind of pace. What, what changed there in your process? Um, I had two, I got two like lovely editors. They're like my best friends. And I just, I just hired them and I got really lucky because they both were kind of in the, uh, I guess kind of the media space or something. They they had background editing knowledge. 
And uh, one of my favorite like times I will always have with what I've done is is just teaching them how to edit like as efficiently as possible. Like that was part of the reason why I wanted to do YouTube is I really just loved editing. And uh, I remember te- like give, giving them like just videos, like multiple videos to teach them the most, you know, the quickest, the most efficient, how to do it, you know, uh, without like killing yourself, basically without like destroying your back, for instance. And um, I worked so hard with them and I, I, I'm i really proud at like where they've become because, uh, I mean, editing is so time consuming. Um, I did it for like the first like six yeah. years and uh, there's really like a, there's a science behind it. I mean, you really want to be as efficient as possible or else you're definitely getting carpal tunnel. You're definitely getting a bad back or something like that. You're going to hate your life. <laughs> Yes, I have those things. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, getting those editors was uh, really crucial. And um, and then I just got lucky the fact that they already had baseline knowledge. I just had to get them to the level to be able to um, to be able to do this without it taking them 10 hours a day, you know, because uh, that that's basically how long it would have would how long it would have taken them if, uh, you know, you want to hotkey everything out and make sure everything's as efficient as possible. Is that your advice on saving yourself from carpal tunnel and back problems is just to make it so you're not doing it for 10 hours or yeah. are there other factors involved? Yeah, I mean, you you want to just make sure that there are so many like little things that uh, you want to be able to, to do um, so that you don't just hate your life, basically. Uh, so I just because that was the last thing I wanted. I didn't want to like, you know hire them to to edit my videos and then them then just end up hating me because they're editing my stupid face for 10 hours a day. Like that was my biggest fear. And I'm like, no, no, no. I got to make sure that you guys are only seeing my face for like three to four hours. That way you don't want to end up stabbing me at one point. Was that a hard process getting them to, well, you mentioned edit, uh, edit efficiently. That's great. But, uh, to get the drew edit feel, uh, was that, was that tough to do so that the product they pumped out, uh, was something that was kind of in your own image and that you felt good about? Um, that wasn't, I, I got lucky because like they're my best friends. So they kind of know my stupid jokes. Like they already know, like I'm that weird guy in the corner bringing up some stupid history thing while they're just trying to have fun. I got to bring up the French Revolution once again for the sixth time. So I think they kind of already knew from my personality um, kind of how to uh, how to approach things like that. I just had to teach them the efficiency part of it. Were they best friends before YouTube? <clears throat> nope. Um, nope. They they uh, oh, okay. they came through me. I knew them separately, and then we all came together. Started the Drew History okay. Company. Uh, no, no, I'm just joking. It's not really. <laughs> we don't have a company <laughs> for tax purposes. There is no company. <laughs> they are not employees. <laughs> Everything operates uh, in the Caymans using Bitcoin. Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, that is right. That is right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, before we started recording and we were just chatting a little bit, you mentioned being misinterpreted. Do you have, um, oh, there are two questions that I have. One is, is how much effort do you place on not getting things wrong? And then the second question is, um, you mentioned being misinterpreted quite often and people having wild misinterpretations of things that you've said. Do you have any standout examples of that? Um, well, I, I guess your first question, I try really hard to not get things wrong because if I do get things wrong, I'm just going to get flamed in the comment section, like all day long. What an idiot. Like, because maybe it doesn't seem like, like it could be like a very small detail, like, uh, the difference between the Australian flag and the New Zealand flag. Those are very, two very similar flags to me, at least when I look at them, there's, there's just, they the only difference is one has white stars, the other the other has red stars. Um, and I, whenever I make a mistake like that, I, I just get destroyed and, uh, that's, you know, it's kind of fun. It's always fun (laughs) to get destroyed every once in a while, but, um, you know, you get destroyed one, one too many times and eventually you're like, okay, I should probably learn this so that, uh, I don't keep coming off just completely dumb. Um, (laughs) and then, uh, your second question, I can't think of a really good example. I just remember like, one person getting really mad that uh, I made a potato joke about Ireland. And um, I'm like oh, no. the most Irish person out there. Like if I can't make a, <laughs> I mean, I don't have the Irish last name, but I did a DNA test and uh, 
yeah, I'm pretty up there. And um, I what's was your just, percentage? Huh? Uh, I think it was. What's I think it's it's anywhere between 25 and 50. I mean, so I'm not you know way up there, but um, you know, it's it's yeah, out there. It's significant though. Yeah, and uh, that's like something that really stands out to me because I was just like, dang. I mean, if I can't make that joke, then who really can? Well, I guess there there is maybe the Irish, but you know, I thought I had the pass right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how it's funny how those, those masks started. I did. I thought I had the potato pass. <laughs> Without that, I got nothing. <laughs> that that hits on so many levels. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny how those those famine and starvation mass starvation jokes just just fall flat oh. occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> famine famine jokes. <laughs> sucks yep can't make a good famine joke it's tough i've tried uh, doesn't work uh, <laughs> in your defense on the australian and new zealand flag controversy they are extremely similar i mean come on come on guys They're pretty similar come on you couldn't uh, come up with anything a little more unique than that i've always I, been I advocating like... that they change it up a little bit i'm a big advocator of that yeah stick a kangaroo on on, a, on, <laughs> on the australian one and uh I don't know, a kiwi, a kiwi on the yep. New Zealand, and exactly. we're set. Yep. We're good. No they mistakes. Gotta, you you got to keep that British watermark in the corner. Got to keep that flag. <laughs> the watermark. <laughs> yep. I've yeah. I've heard they try it. They're, they're that's attempting been, to yeah. change it up. I've heard. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Is that, um, yeah, it's been a pretty hotly contested thing for a couple decades uh, about uh, like actually having a public referendum about the New Zealand flag. I know that. Uh, Mini Kudos has talked about this. He's originally a Kiwi. He just cosplays as an Australian. Uh, but but yeah, he I think he wanted to do a video at one point about the designs that were submitted for that flag. Uh, but there's a really unique uh, unique crossover here with Vsauce too. One of the designs that was uh, submitted in the '80s was a flag designed by Friedensreich Hunterwasser. Oh. Now, Kevin knows a bit about him. Yeah. Yeah, if anybody wants to learn about Friedensreich Hunterwasser, watch my video The Invention of Toilets because uh that guy had he invented a toilet. And he was not a big yeah. fa fan of wasting his waste. So we talk a little bit about him. Quite possibly one of the most the important of inventions right there. Can't think oh, of. Oh, it's got to be right. I mean, can you imagine the the amount of plagues we would have still been through? Oh, the the toilet. Yeah, in yeah, the video the I toilet. mentioned, it's it's considered the greatest medical advance of all time. Yeah, the flush it's, toilet yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, let's go down this rabbit hole because I I love this. This is the kind of thing that that we can't do with with everybody we interview because their content doesn't lend itself to this. But let's talk about the greatest advances. If you had to, if you had to start ranking a few of these, what come out? What what kinds of things come out? You've got the toilet as being as being great. You've looked and and critiqued and played with so many uh, nations, uh, countries, tribes, everything. Uh, what is the most significant when you boil it all down? Um, hmm, yeah, I might go down to. It's got to go back to like way back in the past. Something as simple as, you know, obviously the wheel, uh, stone making, bronze work, all that stuff. So crucial. I mean, because we had to we had to build that stuff, even if it led to thousands, millions of people, you know, going to war and stuff like that. We had to get down that path so we could get to the uh, to the good stuff at the end, like toilets. <laughs> and that's that's just something that uh, civilization has taught me, because you always got to go through those those early technologies so you can uh, kill people better so that eventually you get to the toilets and the computing and things like that. What would you say? I have an answer. Uh, do you, do you have one, Kevin? I'll let you go first. If you, if you do, I am a big fan of the refrigerator just for the, the cold, mm, cold storage of food has really, you know, I would take that. It basically digestion toilets. <laughs> <laughs> toilets and refrigerators Honestly. and uh after that i think i could i could make my way uh with or without a lot of other things i think Th but those two pretty clutch i got a recent one for you what about the air fryer sinks so I'm, i know i'm a super <laughs> millennial right now but damn 
It's so annoying uh, to clean. Casey, Casey Neistat <laughs> invented Casey Neistat invented the air fryer on Twitter like two weeks ago. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, I did. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I stopped using uh, it. It was too annoying go, to clean. What? What a oh! Throw it in the dishwasher. Come on. With all the caked on grease in the dishwasher, yes. the crust yes. makes it better. It's a dishwasher. The crust makes a Some fire hazard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so I have a theory on this, and I'm going to go meta. I think the most important invention ever uh, was compound interest, because I think compound interest allowed for the uh, incentive to finance things that led to everything great after it. I think without compound interest in the incentive to lend, many, many, many things don't happen, uh, and they certainly don't happen quickly. So my vote is actually for an idea rather than a thing. Dang. Thank mm. you for look, making us look stupid, because that was a good one. That's a pretty good one. I didn't even think about it that. Just, I mean, if you think about it, if, if there's no... Uh, if there's just no incentive to give somebody some money for a while or some material, like, well, why would you do that? And if people can't access the money or the equipment or the services or anything like that, like, how does anything ever get done? I mean, uh, we take loans to go to college. Uh, states and nations take loans to operate. You know, I don't know what the deficit is now, but it's like 11 trillion billion and, and growing by the day. Um, you know, none of that ever happens, uh, unless somebody is just so charitable, they let you have a bunch of money. Uh, so it, it just seems like the, this weirdly like underappreciated driving force of, of human progress. That's my, that's my Ted talk. That's good. That was good. That's gotta be high on the list of underappreciated Definitely. things in general. Cause nobody likes it. Right. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Everybody hates it. You know, it's like when that's a, a contributor to, um, you know, the anti-Semitic tropes is that, you know, centuries ago uh, in some places, uh, Christians were not allowed to lend with interest. And so money lenders were non-Christians and that was very often Jews. Well, nobody likes the bank. Everybody hates the bank. I see so much uh, complaining about things like ATM fees, like Banks are like public enemy number one. So that stretches back uh, quite a long time. So it's it's really one of those kind of bittersweet ideas where uh, it's great for some people and makes others completely evil. Right. But ultimately lifts civilization in a way that would be impossible without Gotta it. have it. Yeah. Got to have it. I wonder, what? this makes me wonder about, uh, about, how lending worked in the Soviet Union. If anybody, by the way, thank you to all of the people who are listening who have come from Drew's Discord. Um, we uh, we let anybody creep and lurk when we record episodes. It's amazing. Thank you for joining. Uh, but if anybody is has some expertise in Soviet finance, send me a DM because I'm curious. I've got some Soviet money. That's that's cool. I get sent some really interesting yeah. things from all around the world because. Uh, because again, the fan base is just now amalgamation. So, um, just recently got sent a communist manifesto and a couple of other like Russian artifacts. It's always cool. What are some of the other things that you've been sent? Hmm. Um, well, luckily not anthrax because that was the number one thing that I was kind of concerned about. Um, besides that, I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, like you know the generic like chocolate. Um, from different countries, which I did eat, probably not a good idea, um, but it was okay. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't terrible. Like a ca like candy from around the world is definitely pretty um, interesting. I've always wanted. I hope someone like uh, I know. I have some fans in Iceland. Do you know in Iceland they eat um, raw shark? There's this uh, this dish. I don't a know Carl. what it's called. What? Yeah. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Did you say I, I'm pretty. It's not hot Carl. That's did you say, something different. You say, it sounded like you said hot Carl. It's not hot like, Carl. Jesus no, Christ. That's We're going to have to edit so many things out of this It's a episode. very different dish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, because I did a video. See, I, again, it, you know, you just learn things by making YouTube videos. I did a video on the world's smelliest foods. And yep. Carl was 
is one of the world's smelliest foods. It's I don't know how to pronounce it because it's yeah Icelandic, but it, I'm pretty sure it's spelled H A K A R L, and it's fermented shark that they literally bury and then dig up after a while. Yeah, yep. <laughs> That's how you make it. <laughs> and I was just thinking, like, if you're going to send any food in the mail, who knows how long it's going to be gone for? You might as well send me that raw shark. I mean. <laughs> That's just going to make it more. It's going to um, get better and better. Yeah, exactly. It gets better with age. It has instructions written on the package, like please leave in the UPS truck on <laughs> on the hottest five days yep. <laughs> of July before delivery. It's like it's like wine. Yeah, I wonder how it gets better. I wonder how. I mean, fermentation. Everybody has has fermented. Like it's one of those things that like every society seems to seems to do to some degree. But I wonder how how that. You know, like let's dig a hole and put the the meat we were going to cook in it, and and just see what happens. <laughs> it just seems like a a really odd thing to stumble across. And how Wait, cool maybe it, it was like a pirate thing. <laughs> they were like it was buried treasure <laughs> that they, they were hiding, and then they just dug it up and they were starving and they ate it and they're like, hey, let's do this again. It's pretty good, but no. Drew's right. You have to go and get this shark. Like, how cool is that? Like, why wouldn't you do this with squirrels? Yeah. <laughs> like, woodchucks or something that's super like, easy. Plaguing you anyway. Yeah. There are not a lot of, of uh, I don't think, woodchucks and that sort of thing in Iceland. I mean, you have to eat I don't know. seafood. <laughs> There's not like a ton of mammals walking around to, to eat there. I'm, I'm Googling... Icelandic fauna now, yes. just to see what the options are. Please do puffins. Uh, a, a lot of a lot of birds. Yeah, that it's makes like sense. birds, and then you have to fish. Yeah, yeah, birds and fish. But they're huh? so cool. They're not going for just any old fish. They're going for sharks. Like that is uh, that is pretty. <laughs> that's pretty up there. <laughs> I, th I think you go for what you catch. <laughs> yeah. then, then you eat it. <laughs> Who knows? So that you don't die. So I've got I've got kind of a, a actually two big. YouTube-ish questions for you. The first one is, do you run into any monetization issues? Because you are talking, like by default, with a lot of these games, you are talking about wars. Uh, and I know that's something that uh, a lot of history and politics and uh, even channels like, like our friends uh, at Out of Frame, Sean Malone, necessarily has to talk about uh, historical conflicts and social problems to uh, evaluate current themes, and and he gets dinged on age restriction and monetization. Does any of that happen with your content? Yes, all the time. I mean, luckily, I have really gotten it down. Uh, I wasn't really able to evolve for so long. I actually thought that, like, very early on, YouTube was just going to cut me down because it was it got pretty bad. Because as soon as I started kind of getting traction. That was when YouTube started barreling down with the demonetization adpocalypse thing. And um, it was rough in the beginning. I just finally, you know how like they, they have that like system of uh, where you rate your own um, videos. Mm, where I, self reporting. Yeah, self reporting. Yeah. I was pretty like, I was, I would listen to what they were doing, li listen to what they would tell me, but I was still getting dinged. Like I was definitely, you know, doing my college dropout self. I was getting an F according to the YouTube algorithm. Like they were, they, cause there was like this big red bar at the top that says, Hey, you need to be more careful with, you know, whatever you're doing. Um, but just recently I finally got out of the YouTube dungeon and, um, they are, they gave me like a green, Hey, you're doing great. I haven't really changed anything up, but I've just figured out more, um, what I can and can't cover. Like I've done this for so long that, uh, I just know the topics that you just don't want to touch. Like that, that's, you know, whether it's, whether it's with the YouTube algorithm or with just people in general, I've had to learn the hard way of things you just don't even want to cover. Um, the the Balkans being one of them, I just stay far away from the you know Yugoslavia or anything like that. Um, but uh, that is uh, that is something that I've had to like overcome, and uh, I, I was I've been able to pretty much um, what's it called uh, learn by learned by i don't know what it's called I don't know, punishment or something i mean i've been dinged a lot but now it's getting better trial Negative by fire. Yeah, enforcement it, there you go both of those <laughs> both of those yeah because i was like at any point youtube might just cut me off here because i mean these the topics are uh pretty rough sometimes you gotta choose your yeah. battles hmm. and and what do you see um 
What do you see in kind of the the future for the content that you're doing? Are you going to stay on cruise control for a while or is something going to pop up that's going to uh, really affect the type of content that you're doing? I want to see how far. I mean, I I think that I I think I've gotten to YouTube's like good point. If you've noticed that there are some within Mm -hmm. the history like genre or the, I mean, you're fine talking geography. And that's the thing. I think I've been very lucky to mix in other subjects, whether it be geography or talking about like the solar system or flags, uh, mix in those topics. So it's not just, you know, sensitive moments or something like that from historical events. So, but I, I think I'm starting to get the YouTube pass slowly because, uh, there are some channels that can just talk about anything. Like they get the complete pass. They don't, I think I had a lot of trouble because I wasn't coming at it from a purely educational standpoint because I was, you know, trying to uh, make it more entertaining. That looked bad to the algorithm a little bit. Um, But I I feel like I'm I'm starting to see the uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. What do you mean by getting a pass? I mean, Hmm. because, for instance, for a long time, I, I don't even know if I still can. I couldn't even put World War Two in my titles. It was, it would always, so it first started with World War II, then it became World War I, then it became the Cold War. Anything with war just was like, no, they're just not going to do it. Um, that was, uh, I don't even know if I still can do it. I've just like refrained from using those topics uh, entirely from my titles and tags. Um, so, but I think if you make enough of this content that that gets monetized, then the algorithm will be more lenient. You know, like if you if you just don't mess up enough times the algorithm will, will give you more room to work with hmm. okay that's what i've noticed at least a little bit i mean i still got to test out well, i mean i don't know if they'll let me talk about war i don't think they will yeah i don't know because i'm not sure exactly how much validity to that is there the, the, the or there is I, I know that they have that p score thing mm-hmm. where they do yeah. rank channels based upon this p score thing and that that does have an effect on the algorithm and obviously there's been a lot of discussion over the years really about the types of content that the quote-unquote trusted news sources Mm -hmm. are allowed to get away with on youtube as opposed to the quote-unquote non-trusted news sources um but yeah i'd be interested to to know how granular that gets as it relates to just yeah, like having having uh, certain words because that because it's clear everybody knows. I know didn't Nerd City do a video about the types of words that have like different grades on them? Yep. Um, you released a big old spreadsheet as, too, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. And Coffee Break put some work into that as well about trending and and kind of what you know gets you banned from trending and this and that. But yeah, a bunch of people have have looked at this from different angles. It seems like to me that there is a channel level of each channel has maybe like you said, P score. Now P score is like by video level, right? Um isn't it? Are you or is that because there's also uh, a second one that's by maybe. channel level. Mm. There's like a secret There's definitely a channel one, yeah. Yeah. And I think that every channel, it seems to me, I mean um, from my own experience that everyone has their own range. Like I am able to say certain words that other places or other channels probably can't. Like I can probably say the word um, Iran or North Korea it, because I have so much data backing my channel, you know, so much metadata that just just like geography focus that they might allow me. But if you're like, you know, I don't know, uh, a toy review channel uh, and you bring up North Korea and Kim Jong-un, they probably won't allow you to to say certain things like that um i think i might have just missed you know maybe messed up in the past using world war ii tags where now once they see that tag it's like boom they're gonna slap me with that yellow dollar sign Mm -hmm. Hmm. yeah it's kind of interesting i i I find it fascinating that out, out of one side of the mouth youtube talks about wanting to pour more resources into being an educational hub and out of the other side of their mouth, they just create, keep creating tools to damage people who make <laughs> educational <laughs> content, such as history content. Yep. Like, um, yeah. it might be important to talk about World War II. Yeah. Um, maybe when you're discussing 
history. You know, it's it kind of involved like, you know, a lot of elements of human behavior, countries, yep, uh economics. If you want yeah, uh, like kind of everything. <laughs> it's pretty important. People, you know, there there's a kind of a perpetual debate about uh, the notion of reparations in the in the US. Well, if if you want to make a video about the state of the reparations debate in 2021, this is a current issue. It should be completely fine. There's no uh there's really nothing terrible in that discussion uh, in terms of of being offensive, but you necessarily have to talk about slavery. You have to necessarily uh Talk about uh, the Civil War, several conflicts, um, you know, the the transatlantic slave trade going back to, you know, 1619 is the date that the 1619 project is, is chosen here. Um, it's funny that, that's going to kill you. That's going to crush you. It's funny that you bring that up because um, one thing that they definitely don't like me to use is anything to do with the Confederate flag. If I show the Confederate flag, it is for sure that video is being demonetized because I made this big campaign to try to get. If if uh, I don't know if you guys remember, if you heard, but uh, the state of Mississippi was trying to replace their flag. And I'd made this big video to try to get one of my followers to or basically all the followers to submit to for the new state of Mississippi's uh, flag, which they did. They did uh, officially pick something else. But um, uh, that video got quickly demonetized. And I showed I, I don't even know if it if it was from the thumbnail. It probably was because I showed like a I think I had like a big X over the the mod it wasn't even the confederate flag it was the old state of mississippi flag and uh that that got slapped with the demonetization okay. that was very frustrating because i would have loved to have seen one pe- one person that follows me to have like at least a flag that made it into the finals that could have been the new state of mississippi's you know choice that they're flying at the capitol yeah and that's a perfect example of uh a current issue that not only is not harmful it's actually doing something that I think most people would would find to be positive, right? Like mm-hmm. this is a progressive thing to replace that flag, and then they make it uh, completely impossible for anybody to make a living talking about yeah. it. Yeah, I was sad because there were some very good submissions too. We had there were some beautiful submissions. That I was like, hey, we got a chance. Imagine a uh, a person that watches me creates this new iconic, you know, um, state flag which i mean luckily there are other things on the horizon there's always places changing their flag so maybe we can get them next time maybe that whenever australia decides to change their flag <laughs> which should be tomorrow <laughs> should be i keep advocating for it come on australia let's get it going let's go guys um <laughs> so uh we have some questions from our listeners um uh you know all of our patrons are allowed to submit questions while we're doing these recordings so go to patreon.com slash the create unknown if you want to submit questions become a two dollar tot or uh and enter the dumpster crew you know the tot is a safe entry point for you and then you know you'll get more and more involved in our cult as as things as the weeks go by and the tcu nights stack up yeah but before we do that uh one of your videos mentioned chad lake kind of dried up and then chad lake is is no no longer the 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 once herculean chad lake alpha lake most chad, alpha lake. chad lake <laughs> yeah the alpha lake was 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 your joke here's mine is it now the virgin lake Ooh. oh no we we gotta ask you know we probably need to ask the virgin islands first because they might already have that locked down i don't oh. know there's a virgin lake in wisconsin Ooh. oh oh have you seen? Which is unsurprising. That's funny you bring that up because there are some insane <laughs> names for places around the world. I've done many videos about crazy names. There's a city in Maine just called F. Just F. That's it. Just the letter F. Yeah, just the letter F. F Maine. <laughs> that's how that's, that is how it is pronounced. F. That Maine. is the easiest mailing address to write out, though. It, it is. It is it's one letter. Does the trick? I, I don't know if you've heard about this. The Austrian city that is also. Uh, another F word. Oh yeah, that's that's got an F. Didn't but they, they change that? Didn't they recently revisit yeah, that? It's now yeah. fugging. It's <laughs> <laughs> a much better F. Yeah, F U G G I N G. You know, if you give me a moment, I've got to. It, it, you you guys have to stall for time for me. I need about thirty seconds here because there's a place name uh, in the U.S. that has a pretty interesting backstory on uniqueness. It was going to be a TikTok. I think 
Kevin, it was uh, on a list of possible TikToks and and didn't make it in. Oh, all right. Well, then I did have a follow up question um, about Chad Lake and just lakes in general. How do lakes dry up? Do you know? Is it just I don't know anything about, you know, ecological things. Is it just it's just too hot? All the water evaporates. I mean, what, what I, happens there? Do you know? I, I know that it can happen naturally. Like I know that just naturally, if it loses, you know, its flow of of water, but that's not what happened to Chad Lake. Apparently, uh, apparently, it was just like bad politics. Maybe I thought I looked it up. It was just a. It could have been either a political thing or <laughs> the um, lake got voted out. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Basically, everyone drank it up. Eviction. I don't even know. There's so much. Yeah. It's actually kind of crazy because like, you know, Chad Lake is just one example, but like the, all the, uh, like water is just a really contentious thing. You know, it's just very like, you know, countries will fight over it. And I don't know if that's exact, exactly what happened to Chad Lake, but, um, there's definitely other examples of that happening. So, so perhaps a neighboring country dammed it. Yeah. And then after it was dammed, it dried know. up because they wanted to keep the water on their side of the border. I don't know that if it makes was exact, sense to me. Yeah. I don't know if it was exactly that. I th- that's happening in um other areas of the world. That's that exact thing is happening. But I don't know exactly what that was um what happened to Chad Lake. There's oh, also uh the ch- the 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 chat has come through. Tom Videoger says that it w- is due to climate change an increase in the population and unplanned irrigation. So mm. people were stealing, uh, they were stealing that Chad, that Chad Lake water mm. for their crops. It was very that Chad. Makes sense. That's how you, that's how you, maybe yeah, that's so us. many people dipped into the Chad Lake <laughs> so they could come out looking like big and buff and sexy that it just dried up. <laughs> You use Chad it too just much. Spread his spread his Chad <laughs> seed all over the place. Where do you think all these Chads are coming from? I mean, that's they dip their toes in the Chad Lake. That's how they. That's that's how John Cena was born, and all the other ones from Fast and the Furious. <laughs> so you bought me you bought me enough time to come up with this. The Wisconsin part kind of jogged my memory. There's a, a town in Wisconsin called Ixonia. I-X-O-N-I-A, and a town split and separated. Um, uh, so all of a sudden, there, there are two towns. Uh, they renamed the first one, and the, the residents of the second town could not decide on a name. So they drew letters at random until they could make a name out of those letters. And so they got Ixonia. Uh, which is the only, no, it's not yeah. bad. It sounds like a real town name and it's the only one, the only Exonia in the world now. That but yeah, they the literally the stupidest thing I've hat. ever heard <laughs> in my life. It, That's it, it doesn't sound real. So does dumb. They couldn't come up with a name. So they just put random letters in a, like people took turn. I mean, yeah, that's uh, exactly who what put happened. the X. First of all, I mean, you already have the, <laughs> they drew it. What do you mean? They drew it. They're like, they, they drew it out. Like, you know, randomly, like they, somebody pulled an X, which I'd say is, is probably unlucky. You know, you got like the Q and Z and X that are going to be tough to deal with, but somebody pulled it. You've got to deal with it. Wait, pulled you know, it they, like they, out they of a hat? Yeah. Yeah. They literally drew letters like randomly. Oh, drew and then le- I thought you made meant like name. wrote it. I thought somebody wrote an I oh, and no, then no, like no. Sally wrote an O and then like Steve wrote an X. No, sort of like, I mean, this was what 1846, so it was before the game of Scrabble, but like, think about just pulling tiles out of a bag of Scrabble tiles, okay. like it was that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Put, it, put the tiles back, shake them around, and come up with a better name. Be like, this one sucks. <laughs> That's what I would have this done. This is kind of like something that would happen in Springfield on The Simpsons, <laughs> like it's that dumb of a, of a process. Oh my God. They're probably That's like, good. Uh, uh, they're probably bored of just like, have you seen all the American, there's so many cities in the U S that basically just jacked European cities, like almost straight up, or they'll just slap yeah. new in front of it. New York. Like there's just so many examples of, uh, just yeah. stealing European names. They're like, you know what? Let's just, let's just randomly pick something. When I think in, in upstate New York as well, which, uh, you know, that was the frontier. Like if you think of, uh, last of the Mohicans, um, that era through, the 1790s new york as we know it now is just very you know barely expanding westward so the names were not at all creative given the timing a bunch of them are named after after uh, people uh, who mattered in the revolution but 
I think of the ones around where we grew up and uh, there's Utica, which is named after a real Utica. And outside of Utica is Rome and Paris, uh, Troy, Syracuse, um, uh, Poland is also just outside of Utica. You can you can drive through like 29 countries on a single tank of gas in upstate New York. It's because they, they reuse so many mm-hmm. uh, different country and, and city names. So yeah, it wasn't at all uh, wasn't at all original. Also it, New Berlin, which is not Berlin. It is New oh, Berlin. Really? When you make it but new, the same you way? just yeah, you just Spelled the same way. Yeah. They, New Berlin is tiny. It's, it's got like a thousand people, so it's not big, but, uh, yeah, they were like, Hey, we're going to make it truly new. We're just going to change the accent on this. Were there Polish immigrants in Poland? Is that why they named it that? Or they're just like, ah, that sounds cool. Polish immigrants in Poland? In the Uh, city of, or the town of Poland, New York. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was confused. So I think that actually was a little, uh, homage to Nicholas Herkimer, uh, the, the general in the revolution who, who died at the battle of Oriskany, which is, uh, up there. But I think Herkimer is, uh, oh, I don't know if it goes back to, uh, Germany or Poland. So, uh, so it's killing Poland me. had a relation to Herkimer. I thought so. Um, but, but I might be wrong about this. Mm. Um, uh, yeah. The chat says he could speak German. It does not mention Polish. Yeah. It know. is adjacent to Russia, though. Poland in New York is is directly adjacent wow, to Russia. Wow, why would so they do that? There's just not... A- <laughs> That's just messed up. <laughs> in the past. <laughs> you know, sure there's a bit that. of uh, <laughs> brutal foreshadowing, <laughs> yeah. yes. <laughs> Uh, well, we have uh, we have a bunch of questions. Do you want to? Should we start that, Kevin? Yes, yes, yes. Are you ready for the Inquisition, Drew? I'm always ready, kind of. Okay. Well, Spanish. these go across the board from things. <laughs> they they're in your wheelhouse, and then some of them are outliers. The first one is from Microspeen. Uh, <laughs> uh, he wants to know what are your thoughts on the great salt lake the great salt lake salt lake city yes um this is just the great salt lake thoughts on the great salt lake my uh my grandma my nana was born there and um that is uh that is all i know whenever i talk about that area i always just bring up you know dudes in suits wearing bicycles now whenever i have like uh simulations you know i always think of um those are the people that are invading other states is uh the regiments always in suits on bicycles, which is actually a thing. Bicycle divisions. Do you know about that? No. No. Yeah, like people, like some some countries would just use bicycles to invade countries at at moments. Sometimes, not not the not the entire time. Yep, there they are. Um, Japan and I think the who Denmark or something used them. It's cheap and quick, isn't yep. it? Don't need don't need any oil when you're just huh. using bikes. <laughs> yeah, it's not very intimidating. Is- no, no. <laughs> So the real cavalry. But you can catch people fast. You catch them off guard. Just a bunch of uh, hipsters. Yeah. Be careful. Be careful what you've said in the past. They might take us over. <laughs> so the next question uh, requires the episode chat. Do you have that open? Um. Yes. Okay. So there's an image here. And uh, by the way, for the people listening, uh, the patrons uh, can access the episode chat and talk with us, show us things uh, as we record the episode, ask questions. That's where all these questions come from. Uh, This is the episode chat on the Discord. This comes from uh, being a patron, a tot or higher. Um, We have a map in there. And this question uh, comes from Maruko. So this is a map that he's drawn. He said uh, he's he's soon to make a topographic CAD version uh, of this island map. What do you suggest a great country should have geolog- geologically and economically? Um, what can you go more in depth with that question? I'm confused. Like what kind of what kind of nation should like an island people? Like are you asking me about that? I, I think. Yeah, I think the question is, if you wanted to give the people settling on this island the best shot at, at succeeding, what are the characteristics that they need to have with geography? And uh, what do they, they need to have that's going to be economically viable? Well, they better know how to build boats, because that is very crucial. Um, or, else, 
or else they're going to end up like um, those. Uh, what's that? What's that tribe somewhere in, I think, the Indian Ocean that is still like untouched by like civilization? Like they're still they've been living there for thousands of years and no one's really communicated with them. I mean, occasionally we have, but then someone got killed. You hear about this story? Mm. There's something like that. But um, uh, back to the back to the thing, uh, the question, I would probably base it off of the Polynesians. Those Polynesians, I, I've always, I always bring it up. Like, I feel like the Polynesians are so underrated with the way they actually like sailed out. They went from, you know, what, what, like New Zealand all the way out to Hawaii. Like that, how is that not the greatest human achievement like ever uh, of all time? So I would probably base a lot of it off that. I mean, aren't they rumors that they, they made it to, um, what's that Ecuador, um, Island where the, with the faces, you know, the, uh, those, uh, Easter Island. yeah, Easter Island. There you go. Easter Island, I mean, yeah. they made it all the way out there. Um, I would base that's, that's a serious haul. Yeah. I, I would base anyone off that. It's kind of funny that you're asking me this question because I get this a lot, even though I cover mostly like historical or, you know, real life things, but like how I would design like a fantasy map. I, I do some videos about that, but, um, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. Yeah. I, I would just base it off of some real life stuff. I would quick aside. F- oh, sorry, Matt. Oh, I on, just want to quickly endorse and, and piggyback on your, on your, uh, mention of getting to Hawaii. If anyone hasn't really looked at where Hawaii is, please, <laughs> please pull up, you know, Google earth and check out where Hawaii is in relation to anything else. Mm-hmm. And the answer is it's a, a billion miles away from everything. Yeah. And they found it. It is crazy. So, and they got there. So, yes, 100% with you on that. I've thought about that before. I, it's incredible. I, incredible. I, 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 I've wanted to do a video of that on that for so long. Like, I've always, I always make this like a meme on my channel. Like, if aliens did come down, I feel like they wouldn't have helped build the pyramids. They were, they were telling the Polynesians how to make it to Hawaii because that is so much more... Well, I don't know. They're both pretty unbelievable, but I think they're like on par with like how insane that 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 was. I mean, again, I just think that's got to be up there with like greatest human achievements at the time. Number one, it does seem st- like statistically impossible uh, that this would they happen. They must have been in, like amazing astronomers, like huh. that just everything had to have yeah. gone perfectly. And you know what? There's probably a lot of them that didn't make it. They just they you know, you mess up just slightly and it's over, you know, like. They go a little bit too far. I guess they could have gone right. back, but um, I don't know if they had enough to go the, back. The other, <laughs> the other seven thousand people who aimlessly sunk because they never exactly. hit anything. You know how people had to sacrifice <laughs> themselves. That's always what I think about too. When uh, when like you know, like all these crazy spices and foods we've eaten. Do you know how many cavemen had to sacrifice themselves because like they just like, hey, should I eat oh. this? Okay, and dies. All right, let's not eat that. You know, like. <laughs> Mount this, yeah, we sacrificed so many people just to figure out what to eat. <laughs> I want to ask a, a question on on the bottom end of Maruko's here about what uh, an island should have to succeed. Uh, to succeed, I've always been really intrigued by the concept of the resource curse, and if uh, if that's a, a new term to to somebody, it's it's the idea where a country has. A lot of one sought after thing, something like oil or gold, that actually hinders their economic development. Is there anything aside from natural disasters, you know, like putting a volcano on an island is, is probably going to go poorly. Uh, but is there anything that you wouldn't want this island to have? That's a good question. Anything. Well, it doesn't look like there's too much like massive desert. It looks like it's mostly useful. I mean, you definitely don't want a whole bunch of like mountains everywhere. You need some flat terrain so you can farm. Uh, I'm looking at it. I, you know, I wonder how big this, um, this island is, you know, I guess if you think about it, mountains, I don't know. I mean, some people can make mountains work. Look at Japan. I mean, a lot of Japan is really focused, mm. really population. The, the population density is really only in a couple areas. So you can make it work if you do have a lot of rough terrain, but, um, yeah, I, I just hope that they're, uh, really good fishermen. That's for sure. They better be really good fishermen. It'd have to be. There's a lot of coastline on this map. I know people listening on the audio can't see, but it's uh, a, lot of, a lot of twists and turns here. Very intricate. Yeah. Mandelbrot uh, uh, came up with this. That, that The tighter you map a coastline, it becomes endless and impossible to actually quantify. Uh, but 
Yeah, let's let's uh, pop to another one. So this this hair painting that you did, Jeff uh, Jeff Davis asked about this. Um, I put the the links in the chat. We'll put them in in the show description too for anybody who wants to see this. You painted this Stalin portrait. I, I'll, I'm going to be generous here <laughs> with your hair. What did you do with that painting? Um, I really should have sold it. Everyone was asking me to sell it. I didn't sell it. Um, I. Um, and maybe I'll do it again and then sell it. But uh, I actually have it on my wall. Uh, I used to just keep it in the the kitchen. Um, I used to have like I still had the whole stand and everything, and I would just keep it in my kitchen. And um, my <laughs> landlord came by and uh, asked what that was, and I was like, "Oh, that's a painting that I painted with my hair." And uh, she just thought I was a freak. I think uh, that that pretty much um, definitely had an effect <laughs> on our relationship. But um, yeah, I just uh, I just painted something. You know, there was like a meme that i look like a paintbrush which i mean i'm not gonna lie it, it can be true sometimes and uh i was like you know what if i just <laughs> you know do a painting in the style of bob ross with my hair and then uh, i shaved i shaved it all off at the end <laughs> you you do uh you do conduct business up front to uh a reasonable degree when when it's talking haircut um but it looks good it looks great and it's it's identifiable which is is hard to do without getting too weird you know and it's like normal and identifiable but we have uh we actually have a question about this about your portrayal of yourself um the grinning reaper has asked why your avatar looks like your head is sliced in half that's because um when i shaved i used to have another um profile picture where i had the the hair and then when i shaved it um i used that I, when I was bald, I just used that avatar and uh, I haven't gone back. I haven't put the other one back. I like the shaved head off. You know, um, I should probably go back to the the other one, the the one, the, my original one where it looked more like a paintbrush. But um, yeah, that's pretty basically the story. It kind of reminds me of uh, uh, the clones in the, the animated Star Wars Clone Wars. Yep. I don't know if anybody's watched that. It's like that, that uh, kind of high and tight, a bit of a flat top. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ben W says it's a banger show. Banger. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting into it. So, uh, this is from one of your people. Oh boy. We, we took a request here. This is from Maximilian Ropes Pierre. Um, how do you, how do you describe how you interact with your community when you do it directly? How do you, how do you feel about the community aspect of what you do? I love it. It's so like, like I said, there's. There's no, there's very, I don't think there's anything like it. I haven't been able to find really any other community like that. Um, I feel very grateful that we have something very sort of unique. Um, like, like I, like I said, describing it, um, earlier, like we have, we have people that will watch like a five second dumb meme and then go on to watch an insane, you know, documentary. So, you know, like in, in the same sort of day. So I think it's cool because, Clearly, these people share the same interest that I share in these just weird topics, honestly. And what do you think of your mod team? I love the mod team. That's the I, uh, they they the have to do <laughs> they have to do so much, and uh, I really don't have time for uh, to be able to you know mod the insane Discord. So I appreciate everyone helping me out there. Yeah, you know, we talked about that Discord. Uh, there's a lot to mod in there. Um, I think it's probably a doubly full-time job to keep things decent and clean. Um, But since I mentioned Ben W, he has a really good question here. Is there any ancient civilization that would give the modern day U S a run for its money on the battlefield? Ancient civilization. Yeah, that is a really good question. Are we talking like we need, are, are they, are we bringing the U S down to, their technology like an older technology or are we leveling them up and giving them guns and tanks and stuff um he says no same tech their original tech so the ancient civilization has to use original tech against a modern tech usa yep oh yes. my i mean let's just assume that they're not gonna drop the nukes i guess um <laughs> let's assume that hmm you know it, i guess it really depends because i guess it is possible um because if we look at, you know, Vietnam, so it'd have to be a defensive strategy, mm. that's for sure. I think it is possible 
there better be a lot of people, maybe in old ancient, you know, China, like Ming or um, like a, an old empire of China, maybe, because you're going to need a lot of people and they're going to need to play very defensive. I don't know. Yeah, I guess they can, you know, hide in those mountains, basically, because obviously the U.S. is just going to yeah. rip them apart from the air. But it is possible they could defend themselves. I think it's possible to beat them. I mean, there's no one I don't know if they're going to be able to invade the U.S., but I think it's possible to uh, to have a stalemate, maybe. They could pull the attrition card and, and exactly. get through it. Yeah, I think I think it is possible. You know, this may have been before your time, but about 10 years ago, there was a debate, and I'm actually going to beat Tom to the punch here and pop this this link into the chat. There was a debate on uh, Reddit about what would happen if a Marine unit was transported back to ancient Rome. Would a properly equipped uh, small unit of, of Marines be able to compete with a, a massive professional army of, uh, of that era. And this turned into an incredible debate, absolutely incredible debate, which is why I've, I've just linked this popular mechanics article and people went through every possible, uh, implication of this from supplies and logistics and just everything. And it, it's it's a very uh, Drew esque kind of yeah, topic. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. Uh, and it, it says uh, in this article that uh, somebody was pitching a film about it, and uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if that ever got off the ground, but that's a movie I'd probably watch. I'm thinking that's like uh, kind of going off of um, what's that show, Deadliest Warrior? Um, is that what it's called? Where they would put one oh, soldier yeah. from one you know era against another? Right. Yeah, it is kind of the yeah, same, same, isn't thing. it? Uh, so this one is back to business a little bit. It's from, uh, Dan who asks, uh, since so many YouTubers struggle to hire editors and to offload all of that stuff onto somebody else, um, uh, and have discomfort with creative control with relinquishing that, um, do you think that you did that whole process more easily? than other people did. Oh yeah. I think I got incredibly lucky. I would never give my videos to uh to some random person that asked me to edit. I mean, I had a lot of people, like random people ask me to edit. I I would just never do it. I I um if it wasn't for, you know, my friends, I would have just kept editing my videos myself. Um but yeah, I, it can be as simple even if your friend doesn't know how to edit. I mean, you guys can learn together. You know, maybe the creator learns first and then teaches them uh, how to go about it, how to effectively edit, you know, one of your own style of videos. It's definitely possible, but I would, I would say you, you got to know the person and the person's got to know you. That's pretty, that's pretty important. Well, this one's the penultimate and it, and it comes from brand new tot, Dr. Uwu. Drew, why do you hate your discord community? I don't know where all of that comes from. Um, I make videos every single day. I think they're referring to because I never go on it. Um, I just never go on it. I make videos every single day and I don't even know how to really use Discord. Yeah. I mean, I don't really use yeah. Discord for that's, that. I think that's the balance. Yeah, that's the thing that's so hard. And, and we do get that. We get different answers from pretty much everybody we talk to where there's this, uh, you know, dividing up time and labor between uh, community stuff and then actually making the content that the community is around. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got to draw that line somewhere and yeah, I, I have to guess that they would rather have, uh, as much content as they could. Yeah, I mean, I make videos every day on the main channel and then I have a second channel where I at least upload once a week. So, I mean, I, I've got no free time. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of videos and, and they're not short either. They're not uh, 90 second little quick yeah. hits they average about 12 yeah, minutes yeah, right about there and i i just don't feel comfortable like i want to make sure that they're they're edited so it's just all very you know it's all time consuming but over the course of like years i've just been able to, to make it really as efficient as possible so our last one here is it's very important what's your opinion of canada this comes from the Ooh, grinning reaper that's a fun one hmm canada that's what i wanted to end with <laughs> so many you know just when you think of canada you just think of so many negative things right um i can't even i don't even know how to summarize it no i uh i like canada i've never been to canada i love canada because you know it's funny i can like i can make whatever joke about canada and they're gonna be fine like they never 
that I've never seen a mad Canadian in my comment section. It is crazy. I've said really dumb <laughs> things about Cana- Canadians and um I think honestly they're just they're just glad to be even be mentioned. They they're probably in agreement when uh when I talk about them and syrup or hockey, I make fun of them for um it's not just Canadians that do this, but you know, have you heard about like uh putting uh syrup on fresh snow and then just eating it like that? I've heard of that. Yeah. Is it what what happens to it? I, mean, it? I guess it's just like a snow does, cone, right? Or a sweet, but okay. um, but it's a tradition, I guess, to uh, just go out fresh with some fresh powder, pour some syrup on it, and then you just eat it right there off the ground. But I, I like to make fun of them for that. And um, and they never get mad. It's so amazing. I, I love Canada. <laughs> it's like the least, it's like, that's my go-to if I, if I need to joke around about a country that will never take itself too seriously. Well, they've got uh, they've got Gordon Lightfoot in the credits column, but then they've got Ricky Berwick in the debits column. <laughs> so I suppose <laughs> I suppose all things Canadian balance out. <laughs> we like Ricky. We love Ricky. We're just trolling. We're friends with Ricky. <laughs> um, uh, real quick, have you ever come across a list where it ranks like the nicest countries? And if so, do you think Canada mm. is number one? Yeah, I think. Uh, I I mean, I haven't. I've heard many, uh, you know, interpretations of what it would be, but oh yeah, Canada's got to be up there. I don't know if they're number one. All those like snow countries, I feel like are just, you know, all the northern countries. Well, actually, not all of them because Russia is probably not up there. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't describe Russia as the nicest. Um, very, yeah. Uh, Canada, Norway, Sweden was, you know, when I went to Sweden, people were very nice up there. I think they're just appreciate they just appreciate being noticed. <laughs> oh, I'm going to throw one in here. I know I know we keep extending. I'm so sorry, but I have to ask you. Once uh, we get back to normalcy and you can get on a plane again, where do you want to go next? Where's wh- what's your white whale yeah, of travel? I I I've been thinking about this question so much because I, you know, it's hard to talk about the stuff I talk about every day without, you know, wanting to go someplace. Um I, I, there's so many. I, I still haven't really, honestly, figured it out. I, there's. I just know that last place I was able to visit was uh, Boston, and that was really fun. Um, I loved Boston. I'm from Southern California, and I know that uh, you guys love California. I know that you guys love every <laughs> aspect of California. Where else can you find <laughs> bums everywhere to to make your day better? You know, <laughs> get to sit in traffic and listen to podcasts. Mm. I mean, California is really great, don't <laughs> you guys right. think? So, yeah, it's a big market yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we've never complained about California on this podcast. Yep. Nope, never. <laughs> Not at all. It's a great place. <laughs> Neither it's have magical. any guests. <laughs> <laughs> it's a magical place. But are there any candidates, um, though, any countries that are like on the short list that you're considering? Yeah, uh, definitely like the UK, Japan, France. I really want to go to Germany. Um, I want to go hmm. to, uh, I mean, my grandparents were about to go to Russia before the, uh, before the pandemic. And, uh, I was like, "Hey, take me with you. I want to. I want to see. I mean, that would been a wild, yeah, been a wild vacation for them. And they're like, they're they're up there. I mean, they're approaching like eighty. I'm like, what are they? What are they doing going to Russia? So, um, that's awesome. Yeah, why not? So I I was like, hey, take me with you, Nana. But uh, (laughs) yeah, those those are definitely up there. Brazil too. Brazil. You know, in the chat right now, yeah, you you probably see this in the episode chat. You're getting a lot of come to Brazil's. I get worried. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six it's Brazils. Like they're l- trying to lure me in for some reason. <laughs> I, I will say that that that's the one I get the most as well. <laughs> it seems like Bra- Brazilians are are desperate for people to visit them. It's a <laughs> just come hang out. It's a it's a fun it's a it's yeah. a little meme. It's a it's definitely it's definitely a meme. We should go. We should all well, go I together. Even, I don't Zou. even mean from the meme. I mean from actual <laughs> Brazilians. Oh, really? <laughs> ah, I just got one last week from this guy Rodrigo who made. He he recreated uh, the Hexapon Vsauce two video. Oh right! He printed out that was amazing all yeah. of the um, all of the uh, the box guides. I don't know what you call them, but to create the game, he printed all the sheets out that actually my my wife made for the video, and then we offered um, afterwards for people to create it on their own. And he did it. He made his own video all about it, and and then yeah, it was like come to Brazil. Like, wow. That's awesome. I think that's not, like the greatest I'm not even leaving my house. It's like the greatest tourism marketing strategy. I mean, they don't Brazil doesn't even invest, doesn't need to even invest in marketing. 
tourism anymore because just everyone's doing it for them. <laughs> well, a national directive. Exactly. Um, before we let you go, we want to we want to highlight your creativity. We want you to come up with a sponsor for this episode. It can be a sponsor. It could be a country. It could be Brazil. It could be all of yeah. Brazil. It can be a, a, a geographical <laughs> location. It could be a dried up lake. It could be a product. It could be anything that you want it to be, but it has to be something that you want it to be. And, and you need to give us an ad read. So uh, let us know what this episode, what your episode of the Create Unknown is sponsored by. Well, this video, this, oh, I already messed it up. Um, well, this podcast was brought to you by North Korea. Drew Donnell has been a big advocate for <laughs> North Korea. Come visit North Korea. Kim Jong Un will uh, shake your hand. Maybe you'll get to meet Rodman. Rodman might be there. Great place to visit uh, during summer. Whole family. That's once again, North Korea. <laughs> Did you hear that whoosh, Kevin? That That sucking sound of our video being demonetized yeah, all i could think of all i could think of was come visit and never leave <laughs> the hotel california uh, anybody who's into wasting time and googling uh check out the burger that north korean airlines serve on their flights you got to see photos of this thing you've got to see reviews of it it is the grimmest bit of food even as far as airline food goes uh check this thing out you will be amazed the burger yeah, yeah. I, it has an actual name, but I can't remember what it is. I only remember. How do you make a scary the, uh, burger? Ah, uh, they figured it out. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, Eric Air uh, Cordio just has this like it's it's not even hot too. It's it looks like something that you left in a lunchbox for like a week. Is it just bread? I just imagine um, it's just bread. The most saddest burger. There we go. We've got it in chat. All right. That's in general. Uh, let's see if it's in episode chat. Um, it's really bad. Yeah. Like, oh, Tom has posted it, but it's it's not opened. You got to see this thing buns open. But honestly, if you're going to experience North Korea, you got to do that's it buns what I'm open. Like that's preparing you. That's like that you're getting into it. You know, I think it's like the perfect meal to like just prepare you for the entire visit. <laughs> I just, I just <laughs> like the phrase "buns open." <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, um, oh, here, there we're nice. getting some pictures in. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and I just threw one in too that has lettuce. It's like the tiniest little sprig of lettuce. Oh God, this thing is grim. What meat is that? Is that supposed um, to be beef? It's unidentifiable. Man, that is. They do not. Yeah, they don't say what it is. But would you expect yeah. anything else? Like, I'd be disappointed if I didn't get this. <laughs> Man, that's that's ground up dissidence. <laughs> that's it. Just <laughs> it really, truly looks that horrifying. Way. It is gray. Yeah, Dan is like it's gray. <laughs> oh man, that's not good. Well, uh, look, I want to oh. end this episode on buns open. Buns open, everyone <laughs> in the chat. Best way to travel. Uh, yeah. Um, come to come to TCU night buns open every Wednesday night 6 p.m. Eastern <laughs> oh, we're here live for everyone if you want to hang out with us in the chat you got to become a patron to do that just go to patreon.com slash the create unknown start as a two dollar tot listen 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 to this deal okay you can get a year's worth of two dollar tot right now for 20 bucks a year's worth you you will be set for 365 days for 52 roughly episodes <laughs> of joy of hang out with us every Wednesday night for 20 bucks. That's the steal of a century. Um, but in between doing that, watch Drew Durnil, D U R N I L. He's cranking out the content. It is wildly entertaining. And despite the fact that he has dropped out twice, and as a self-proclaimed idiot, uh, he's actually not that at all. And it's uh, very, very smart. It's very educational. It's very witty. It's very funny. Uh, highly recommend Truly it. Truly one of the best. Absolutely. Um, that's all I got. Drew, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. We'll see you next Wednesday. Wednesday night, TCU night. Uh, who are we talking with to? Ted. Ted. Ted think, Nivison. Not I think we have... Uh, Ted Nivison. Yeah. Don't make that Not mistake. Vision. No, <laughs> he doesn't like that. No. Yeah. Nope. We'll be here with Ted 
uh, next Wednesday. See you there. And as always, uh, no, that's the other thing I do. See you, Space Cowboys. Thanks for listening to The Create Unknown. We'd like to extend a huge thank you and congratulations to the Tots and Dumpster crew who save tiny little lives every month. A tremendous shout out to our elite baby gang. Trevstad, Boromir, Botdogs, Chinchilla, Isaac, Conrad, James, Jeff Davis, Patrick Pister, Baseweight, and Dojangles. And thank you to our grizzled, battle-hardened child infantry. Jen Mefasanti, Kevin Menard, Mikhail Steinke, Risebread, Sean Malone, Triple Question Mark, Monahim, Ryan Kinder, Sheep, and Maruko. Thank you as well to our producer and editor, Ben Webster, and to our media manager, Dan Yosua. The Create Unknown is an unknown media production.